In the 21st century, we enjoy unprecedented advancement in technology. What is often forgotten is that the foundation of this achievement was laid down some time ago by scientists who were driven by intellectual curiosity and wonders of natural world, and not by economic concept. A few, however, cannot disprove experimental results. I do not know how to answer this question. <laughs> 喺睇片之前，大家記得分享、讚好同訂閱卓劍名家，最緊要撳埋呢個鐘仔，咁你就唔會錯過我哋嘅最新影片。Today, the problem which challenges us are immense. How can these challenges be met with tools we have developed? I would like to read a short passage. Humanity is being ravaged by diseases. Doctors are powerless against it. Pollution is everywhere. Men and women die daily in senseless ethnic conflicts. Homelessness is rampant. People can read. Children are being killed in the street. This was your in 1350. Yet from this period of despair, destruction, delusion, sprung the greatest period of hope. New ideas, new expression. The Renaissance was born in Italy and spread throughout Europe, transformed how people look at the world and their place in it. Scientists re-examined old ideas of the nature to, of the universe inherited. From the ancient Greeks and Romans, modern science, or understanding of natural phenomena using experimental technique, was established during that time. Arts and cultural flourish. In the 21st century, we enjoy unprecedented advancement. In technology, such as in the field of communication, computers, trans transportation, healthcare, commerce, and so forth, which have had dramatic effect on the quality of life. What is often forgotten is that the foundation of this achievement was laid down some time ago. By scientists who were driven by intellectual curiosity and wonders of natural world, and not by economic concern. Here is my triangle on basic research and daily life. I use physics as an example. Physics is a science of distance. In nineteen hundred, we have classical physics. The distance we're talking about one meter. We have mechanics, thermodynamics, optics. Now it's used in microwave, in aerospace, in optical engineering. In the thirties. The important physics is atomic physics, 
The distance is 10 to the minus 10 meters. And now it's used the artificial intelligence, computers, superconductor, lasers, and semiconductors. In the 50s, we go to distance of 10 to the minus 14 centimeter, the atomic nuclear, now is new, used in nuclear reactor. So, with time, we go to smaller, smaller distance, particles of force. On the opposite side, for large distances, we have planets, 10 to the 11 meters, stars, 10 to the 17 meters, galaxies, 10 to the 25 meters. Looking at the stars is what we do for timekeeping and navigation. The pyramid has grown with new application to increase its height. For fundamental research, continuously widen the spaces. The role of basic research implies that it finds itself in the outermost corner of the pyramid. Hence, it is sometimes disregarded as being remote from daily life. Only after some time, when applications develop and public become familiar with new phenomena, does the value of basic research become more understood. Experiments are of fundamental importance to the advancement of knowledge. A theory, however elegant, cannot disprove experimental results. Only when an experiment contradicts with theory or knowledge advance. So let me share with you two experiments of mine. One is physics at extremely small distances. Another is physics at extremely large distances. Physics at extremely small distances is using exology. This is the summary of the history of development of accelerators. The earliest accelerator in 1612, the Tower of Pisa. Extremely low energy and this is where Galileo worked on gravity. This accelerator still exists today, maybe many of us have visited it. And this is where I work. It's in, located between Switzerland and France in, in Geneva, known as European Organization for Nuclear Research, have an accelerator has a circumference of 27 kilometers. And, and one of the byproducts is the invention of WWW, which everybody uses. This accelerator has a extremely high energy. The purpose is to study fundamental building blocks of nature. After 400 years, we now know that fundamental elements of nature are electrons and quarks. Namely, on the periodic table, you have atom, outside you have electron, inside atom you have nucleus, such as inside the nucleus there are protons and neutrons, and then inside the photon neutron, and there are quarks. So the question to be asked, how many types of electrons? What is the size of the electron? 
kind of that can be separated into smaller particles. You say the smallest elements are quarks. How many times the quarks are there? What is the size of the quark? Can quark be divided into smaller particles? In physics, the basic idea is always very simple. If you have a lot of formulas, you have already went to the wrong place. Thank you. It's really amazing to talk with professors in face to face. Uh, there is a classical argument about uh, whether China needs its own um, particle qualifying. Particle I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. Uh, some people want to balance uh, the financial problem and uh, the probability of scientific research achievement. But you said uh, uh, finance is not a problem. So, uh, what's your point of this argument? Thank you. Could you please try something? I I suppose it's about. Uh... You, you invest in these experiments, but you don't know whether you get any returns. Is that the sort of question, right? You may not uh, be successful, or, or the money may be wasted, right? Yeah, okay. I do not know how to answer this question. <laughs> so far, because I've been very careful, because I've always think my experiment is the single most important thing for me. And fortunately, my, my wife, Dr. Susan Ting, fully support me. So, every one of the experiment always produce good physics results. I have done many experiments and quite a few of them has, it, has not been popular. Most of the people think, most of the experimentalists think, such a difficult thing cannot be done, like the spectrometer in space. And other people think, theoretical physicists think it's totally useless. And we know the answers, but I ignore them. The way I ignore them is to ask the government to find the best people from the Academy of Science, people who received Nobel Prize before, to do a review. Find something better than what I propose. Support them. If you couldn't find something better, you would support me. This happens all the time. You, you cannot avoid things, you need to confront them. Never almost always never ignore the content. Almost almost never go to a person's home. When they come to talk to me, it's the only physics. 中意名家分析，記得俾 like 同埋分享，支持同訂閱卓見名家。最緊要撳埋呢個鐘仔，咁就唔會錯過我哋嘅新片。